Saudi partnering with an Israeli firm to deploy renewable energy in the kingdom. And Emirates Steel Arcan's first half profit comes in flat. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Israel's Solar Edge Technologies and Saudi's Ashlen and Bros Holding are launching a joint venture to deploy renewable energy in the kingdom. The new company will offer energy generation, storage and management to Saudi businesses. The deal is part of U.S. efforts to have Israel form a diplomatic alliance with Saudi. It came a day after Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen talked with U.S. Special Envoy Dan Shapiro about widening Israel's reach to more countries in the Middle East. Brazilian gun manufacturer Taurus Armas has signed an MOU with Saudi Scopa Defense to explore establishing a joint venture in the kingdom. The JV aims to produce Taurus guns in Saudi for sale to GCC countries. Both companies have a one-year time frame to conduct their studies on the JV. In 2020, Taurus signed a JV with steelmaker Jindal Group to produce and sell guns in India. Saudi established Scopa to provide defense systems and further its defense capabilities. Emirates Steel Arcan saw first half net profit of $76.37 million, roughly flat from the same period last year. First half EBITDA rose 3% year on year to $166.62 million. The EBITDA margin was 13.8% versus 12.9% in last year's first half. The largest listed steel and building materials company in the UAE's first half revenue dropped slightly to $1.21 billion compared to $1.26 billion during the same period of 2022. Abu Dhabi-based Aldar Properties posted $354 million in Q2 net profit, marking a 52% year-on-year rise. The results came from strong sales and increasing contributions from its recurring income portfolio. Aldar's revenue for Q2 rose 21% year-on-year to reach $871.2 million. Q2 EBITDA came in at $381.2 million, indicating a 47% year-on-year rise. Aldar's net profit for the first half totaled $571.7 million, marking a 38% year-on-year rise. Lebanon's central bank first vice governor Wassim Mansouri has urged the government to execute long-delayed reforms demanded by the IMF as he confirmed temporarily taking over Riyad Salema's role as governor. Mansouri said this is the country's last chance. He called on the government to pass the necessary legislation, such as the 2023 budget, capital controls, and the restructuring of the banking sector. He also proposed to cut all central bank funding for Lebanon while reforms are implemented. Banking giant HSBC saw pre-tax profit more than double to $21.7 billion in the first half of this year, boosted by higher interest rates. The massive jump from $8.8 billion in the same period a year ago came as central banks around the world ramped up borrowing costs to fight inflation. HSBC says revenue jumped $12.3 billion to $36.9 billion. The bank will issue a dividend of $0.10 cents per share and it will launch a $2 billion share buyback. Toyota's Q1 net profit soared 24% year-on-year to $9.1 billion. The world's biggest automaker by sales sold 2.538 million vehicles worldwide, up 8.4% from a year ago. Toyota says the sales volume increased in all regions due to productivity improvement efforts promoted with suppliers, in addition to an improvement in the supply and demand situation for semiconductors. U.S. stocks ended a strong July on upbeat company earnings and hopes of a soft landing for a resilient U.S. economy. All three major stock indices ended with gains for the month ahead of a busy week of earnings reports from companies including Amazon and Apple, plus U.S. economic data including the jobs report. The Nasdaq led Wall Street higher as mega cap growth companies like Alphabet and Meta, as well as chip makers Intel and Lam Research posted strong quarterly earnings. Meta is reportedly preparing to launch a range of AI-powered chatbots with different personalities in September. Meta has been designing prototypes for chatbots that can have human-like discussions with its users as it works to boost its engagement with its social media platforms. One of the chatbots speaks like Abraham Lincoln and another advises on travel options in the style of a surfer. The purpose of these chatbots will be to provide a new search function as well as offer recommendations. 
and the giant glowing X no longer marks the spot on the San Francisco headquarters of X, the company formerly known as Twitter. The city building department logged 24 complaints after a weekend of the Big X, which on Friday was erected on the roof of the company's downtown San Francisco headquarters on Market Street. Neighbors were complaining about intrusive lights, with people in the neighborhood posting videos of the giant X glowing, pulsing and strobing. I'm Rami Afaraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.